You might call this my darkest video yet. Do you know what is used to provide vision at night at school playgrounds? Recessed lighting. Sorry, that's the best uh, night vision dad joke I could come up with. My name is Dave Tim from Guns and Tactics. Thank you guys very much for spending a few minutes of your day checking out this review of the Noise Fighters Panel Bridge. This is a really, really cool product. I don't like to make bold statements such as coolest thing I've ever reviewed or you know, clickbait, whatever. But I have to say this thing right here is probably, I, I can't think of a cooler thing I've reviewed. So that's just, it is what it is. Night vision up front is like a superpower that you can buy. So night vision number one is just cool. But then having this uh, product right here, and we'll get into why it is so cool here in a little bit, really, just really was cool to use. So real quick, my background with night vision. I am not an operator who operates operationally. I don't use night vision, kicking in doors and uh, going overseas and doing all that other stuff. So I wanna make it very clear that I don't consider myself a night vision expert. How this started, I teach handgun red dot classes. I go around the country and I teach LE classes, things like that. And I was at a class um, last year and I had a student their team, their, he was on a TAC team and their team uses night vision and he was asking, how do the red dots work with night vision? Now I know others have used it, but I personally didn't have any experience with that. So I shared what experience I was told from others, people that I trust, things like that to him, but it was something that I wanted to do my own research on. So I was planning on buying a single PVS-14, a J-Arm, you know, getting some sort of a a helmet. I was planning on going down this quest on my own. And I was talking to Neil Brace, the owner of Noise Fighters, who makes the amazing gel cups for Ear Pro. I did a video, you can check that out. But this was several months ago before this product was public. And he said, hey, I've got this product coming out. I think you might like it. Are you interested in checking it out? So Neil was nice enough to provide the actual panel bridge, which is his product, as well as a couple of sample PVS 14s. So Business disclosure, I'm not getting paid to make this video. Uh, I'm not getting any promos or anything like that, but I can say this was so cool that I'm actually working with Neil and I'm gonna be buying this setup. And Neil is gracious enough to be very patient with me while I uh, raise some funds, but I'm buying this. Like, it's, it's legit that cool. So anyways, I wanted to get some more info. So he uh, was nice enough to loan me this, tell me a little bit about the design and the background of the product. And I started taking it to classes and I swore most of my students uh, to secrecy that got to check it out of like, hey, there's this new product coming out, here's what it is. And everybody who used this thought it was absolutely amazing. Now, I probably will do some more videos in the future about red dots and night vision and all that. And there's other really good content out there as well. But bottom line, if you're gonna be using night vision, uh, RDS handgun is the way to go but this product is just absolutely amazing. Let's get into it. This is the panel bridge and it consists of an arm, a jaw, a centerpiece, jaw, and then an arm down here. Now what's really cool is it allows you to mount two PVS 14s in a binocular type setup. The whole panel bridge itself is super lightweight. It weighs about 1.5 ounces, which is lighter than single J arm mounts on the market from other people. So you're getting an incredibly lightweight, really, really good binocular mount. So some people are gonna say, hey, why would I buy this versus other mounts? Number one, it's really good, lightweight, offers a lot of adjustability. If you're just looking to run two PVS 14s on your helmet or a head mount or something like that. Now. There's a whole nother debate that could be had versus running two PBS 14s versus a dedicated binocular system. That's a whole nother topic. This is mainly for if you wanted to run two PBS 14s in a binocular setup. Now, just to preface before you're looking through the footage, some of the footage was literally kind of rigged up with a camcorder through a uh, PBS 14 or to try to simulate what I am seeing. I will say this. What you will see through your set of PVS 14s and a panel bridge is absolutely amazing. It is really cool, especially once you get that sweet spot adjustment. What I'm showing you doesn't do it justice, okay? Uh, I was trying to rig it through a camcorder to get footage and then eventually I was able to get some of these uh, first person view cameras that rig up here. And unfortunately, these were a little harder to work with than I would have liked and the resolution isn't as high, but I, you are gonna see some through the panel bridge vision. And again, I had to edit everything together. My goal was to make it as good 
as I could to try to represent what I was actually seeing, but what I was actually seeing is way, way better than what you're gonna see in the video. So that's, that's is what it is. But here's what's really cool about the panel bridge. So you get your helmet on. This is just a bump helmet from Hardhead Veterans. And then your mount will go like so. Now, obviously you can adjust this, okay, to be a binocular. And it works out just as a really good binocular setup. You would have your 40 degree field of view. But what's cool is that you can start to adjust the outward field of view so you're starting to gain awareness. Now there is a little bit of overlap in the middle, but your brain does a really good job of overlapping the two images and putting everything together. Now likewise, if I put them here in a binocular vision, you're gonna see that one circle. Your brain just knows that it's looking through an image over here and an image over here. It combines the two and you see a 40 degree field of view. And this is what worked really well. If I knew I was gonna be uh, focusing on one specific target, doing some handgun shooting, things like that with a red dot, I would. Pr I had a little bit more success running it in more of a traditional binocular setup because that way I could present the gun, the red dot would be right here, and then the reticle is right there because we're focused at the target and our red dot projects, if you will. It, it just worked absolutely amazing as you can see in the footage here. Now when I was using the pano mode, I did find that I'd have to put the handgun out a little bit more or I'd have to turn my head slightly. Not a deal breaker by any means, no big deal, but I did find that that was just one observation use experience or if you are uh, gonna run like an IR laser on your handgun or something like that, then it was no big deal. You could keep it in the panel mode and then simply the laser would be you know, in your vision and you could aim with the laser. So uh, that worked really good. But basically once you get your mount set up and you have that sweet spot everything just kind of comes together and there's a slight gap in the middle that I found was even kind of handy if I needed to like check my phone or uh, use something you know really close and local where I didn't have to rely on the night vision it worked out just fine now it can articulate out at max and you're gonna gain about a 75 degree field of view for me and for my eyes that just did not work uh, I, I couldn't get my eyes to kind of deviate out enough to get that image without it getting a little kind of wonky. So for me, I had to kind of bring the inner pupil distance or I, I forget all the exact night vision measurement terms, but if you're a guru on this, you can you know leave the appropriate terminology down in the comments. But I found that I had to bring them in a little bit and then adjust them out. And I would guess I probably gained, I don't know, 25, 20 degree field of view or whatever, but it was substantial. and. It, it was just an absolute advantage uh, compared to that traditional 40 degree field of view. Now, one thing I will say, uh, I got to play around with a true quad setup at a class. A student had that and it, it's cool. Uh, don't get me wrong, quad setup is, is really awesome. I don't know how their agency afforded it, but it was really cool. And now, is this a quad system? No, but it's not meant to be. This you can get into depending on the quality of PVS 14s you get, which obviously can be anywhere from like, you know, 2,500 bucks all the way up to well over four grand. And then you add the panel bridge, you can get into a more wide binocular setup. A lot of people like to look at night vision and they solely revolve it around the use with a firearm. And I totally get that. Uh, people hunt with it, people train with it, go from there. But I look at it as more of a realistic approach. I'm a small town street cop. How could I use this product Typically on a day on patrol, what would it you know, give me for benefits? We're not always in these armed confrontations. Sometimes we're doing search for a lost person, a missing person. We're searching for a suspect who we are relatively confident isn't armed, but yet we still need to search and locate and arrest that person. Or maybe we're just simply having to observe a particular crime scene or something like that. So number one, what I liked about the panel bridge is that I could grab it out of the bag and I could simply use it as a binocular system. It gave me a nice easy way to hold and have binocular vision to observe. I don't have to have it hooked up to a helmet, I can simply use it as a set of night vision binoculars, which is really cool. Additionally, if I do put it on a bump helmet or something like that, if I am looking for someone, having that additional field of view was an 
absolute advantage compared to that 40 degree. I was able to walk, uh, I drove a UTV around on some private property while I get used to driving with night vision and it having that additional field of view was just an absolute advantage. It was just a really, really cool user experience. Here is the actual panel bridge itself. Like I said, it consists of an arm, a jaw, centerpiece, jaw, arm, and it does come with the hardware. It is a polymer item and it is uh, I don't want to just say it's 3D printed uh, because it is not like your typical 3D printer that you're going to find at like the community ed library or anything like that. This is a very, very high quality produced piece that is engineered very well to work very well together and then it has good quality hardware. Uh, everything is very snug. There's no play or slop. The pivots, everything feels just how it should. It locks up really solid in the Wilcox night vision mount that I use and it just, there's no play, there's no rattle. I mean, there's a little bit in the Wilcox mount more so than the panel bridge. And in reality, it's probably, you know, a little bit of play from the Wilcox mount to the helmet receptacle, but uh, everything fits really, really nice and snug on the panel bridge like it should. The only tool you'll need is the appropriate size flathead screwdriver. You don't wanna make sure you use a blade that is thick enough with the slot so that there's no play, so you don't damage the hardware. The panel bridge is labeled right and left, and you're simply gonna attach your PBS 14s. So you're gonna take your first PBS 14, align the arm over the body, align the screw, and tighten. I find it's easy to rotate the bridge over, place the second tube, align the screw, and tighten. Now you don't need to go like gorilla tight, okay? We just need to snug down to make sure that everything is held securely and that is it. Installation is complete. And again, you have that nice articulation. Everything feels really good. There is also a lanyard loop on the back of the panel bridge. You can use this to secure to the bungees on your helmet. That just gives a little extra peace of mind and security to keep the panel bridge and night vision on your helmet. Even if the helmet release were to become bumped somehow or anything like that, those bungees are gonna hold a little bit of pressure keeping that panel bridge in very expensive night vision on your helmet, which is nice. Now I do recommend getting a good quality night vision mount if you are gonna use the panel bridge. This is a Wilcox mount. And what I do like about it is it does have a wide range of adjustment, making it really easy to get the set of tubes right in front of your eyes so you're not struggling. Uh, early on when I didn't have it adjusted quite right, it definitely was more of a strain and I found myself kind of struggling to get everything. But once you get that height adjusted right, you get the uh, inner pupil distance adjusted right and you get that that sweet spot that works for you of the pan, if you will, everything just came together. And now that I have it, although now I probably just messed it up, but once I have everything adjusted, it's just boom, comes down, done. I can adjust it in for binocular, that 40 degree focused, easy. Come back out and now I can do searching, I can do walking, navigating, whatever it might be. Now the only thing that I did notice that I wish was a little different or a little bit uh, more configurable was storing them on the helmet. And in reality, it's not a panel bridge issue, it's a Wilcox issue. But just something to note if you are gonna be running this. So when we're in the use you know, position, something like this, that's fine. But when we want to fold them back up, we want the night vision to be as close to the helmet as possible. Now this side, that'll rotate down nice and relatively close to the helmet. However, this side over here, we can only go back so far, and that's because of this material here on the Wilcox mount. Basically, it doesn't allow the arm to fold. So you can see the difference in how much snugger this side is versus this side. Now, when I was wearing it, walking around, doing whatever, is it noticeable? Not really, I mean, you can kind of feel that it's a little different, but I'm also wondering if I can't relieve a little bit of material on the Wilcox mount to allow that arm to fold a little bit tighter. Uh, I don't have any other mounts to compare it to, so I don't know if there are other mounts on the market that would allow this tube to fold in tighter, but I would love to see both tubes being able to fold in really nice and tight to the helmet. Now, being that it is a quick release, you could easily take this off, uh, put it in a padded pouch and then simply, you know, just don the night vision when needed if it's that big of a deal. But I know a lot of guys like to run their night vision on their helmet, train like you play, you know, whatever, go from there, that's fine. For me, 
day to day, I keep this in a hard case. It's a very expensive piece of equipment. Uh, and again, work in patrol, I might not always need a helmet, but sometimes it's nice just to have a uh, pair of binoculars that I can just quickly use and kind of scan and check things out. So this is an incredibly useful tool. If you are interested in night vision and you're looking to run dual tubes, I would highly recommend getting this. Uh, pricing and availability. It is available right now. Uh, price is $600. However, there is uh, sale pricing that is going on right now. For more information, you can check out noisefighters.com and you can order direct. Again, regular price is 600 bucks. However, depending on when you're watching this, there might be a sale so you can get it for a little bit less. There all are also gonna be some dealers that will be carrying it, but you can check out the full info, noisefighters.com and you can order direct. While you're at it, get a set of uh, gel cups as well. They work really, really well, but I can't recommend this product enough. And if you compare it to what other binocular bridges cost, I, I see the value and it gives you all of the benefit of a really nice adjustable binocular mount, but the added benefit of being able to gain field of view. For me, that is a no brainer and I would buy this 100% of the time compared to some of the other stuff I've played with. This is a really, really cool product. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Have you used night vision? Have you used this or something else? Let's have a great conversation. If you have questions about this or anything else, you can also send us an email. Email address is shown below. That is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. At the end of the month, we have our QA show where we answer your question and then we give away a prize as well. Again, you can search online for noise fighters. Check us out online and on social media. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.